My name is Bella. I had Mr. O'Connor last year for pre-calc, so I don't even have him this year for physics, but I still go to him at seven in the morning sometimes for help. And I think it's amazing that he's always there that early in the morning and super helpful. It's not every day you see a teacher like that. Hi, my name is Gina Carbone. I have Mr. O'Connor for physics four. Mr. O'Connor is always in the hallway saying hi and welcoming me, telling me good morning when I arrive. He is a very good teacher who's very well educated and helps us learn a lot in physics. Hi, I'm Ian Youth. I'm a senior. I had uh, Mr. O'Connor for AB Calculus BC last year. I just want to say that he's probably the reason I'm going to pursue math in college. Hi, I'm Leah. Hi, I'm Jasmine. Hi, I'm Selena. And we have Mr. O'Connor for Physics 4, and we just want everyone to know that he's a very understanding teacher, and he's always been there for us our senior year. Um, he stepped up when one of our math teachers here at Scarborough got, um, was out on an injury, and he just he opened up his free time, and he let us come in for help, and he just understands us. and. Let's just come to him no matter what. And he like has two classes with like kids who don't really know what's going on and he gets here super early just to help us out. Thanks for being a great department head and always supporting us. Vocal Carter 2020, no matter what it is, Vocal Carter 2020. And thank you so much, Mr. O'Connor, for all you do for us. Thank you, Mr. O'Connor. We really appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. O'Connor. I'm really glad that we can, he can get the recognition that he deserves. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Connor. <laughs> Mr. O'Connor solves the most complicated problem without using a calculator, and I don't get how. <laughs> So um, this obviously was a really sp uh, unique nomination because a group of students, now you know who it was, um, a group of students came to the board um, specifically and asked to um, nominate one of their teachers. Um, so they went outside, normally, so I guess I should explain, normally the process is that a, a staff member or, um, or a teacher will nominate somebody through the internet, the internal. So they came to us outside of that and wrote a letter. Um, to nominate their teacher and it was it was just so special and I actually a lot of them are here tonight I feel like we should have a reception afterwards <laughs> for, um, and they um, are gonna come up and one of them is actually gonna read the letter that they wrote to nominate Mr. O'Connor you can all come up Dear Communications Committee, we are writing to nominate a candidate for the Scarborough Board of Education Spotlight Award as students of a hardworking, well-deserving teacher, David O'Connor. David O'Connor is a physics teacher as well as a teacher of pre-calculus and AP Calculus BC. On top of the work done for his students, he serves as the department chair for the math department at the high school. Over the last year, Mr. O'Connor has provided a myriad of services to the students to help them succeed and thrive in some of the most challenging courses offered. He meets nearly every morning with students well before the school start time to help them study, understand, and catch up, catch up on everything from pre-calc to AP Calculus BC to physics. He is student-centered and strives to meet the needs of anyone who enters his classroom. As students, we have had the great honor to have Mr. O have to have the O'Connor experience as we watch one of the smartest people in the school explain such an immensely complex subject to a level of which students are equitably given the opportunity to understand and truly learn the topics. He never skips steps or moves on until he is sure that students are comfortable with the content he teaches. Mr. O'Connor is one of the most understanding, kind, and thoughtful teachers that we have ever had, and we are confident that there is no person more deserving of recognition for this award. He does not only care about our learning and education, but also about our personal well-being. 
It is with great honor that, as the students, we nominate David O'Connor for the Scarborough Board of Education Spotlight Award for his patience, dependability, and his whole student approach to teaching. Sincerely, his students. We also have several alumni in the room who had the esteemed pleasure of the O'Connor experience as well. So. You want to show them doing Anyone who's ever been in Mr. O'Connor's class should go up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joe, does that count as an alumni event? Does that count as an alumni event? Congratulations, very well deserved. Um, the high school 2021 Washington DC inauguration trip. I had no idea that I was gonna be falling off. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty intimidating. Um, I must say, I must not be in contention for any sort of spotlight awards because I'm wiping diapers, uh, cleaning diapers and wiping bums around 6.30. <laughs> I can try to get here for about quarter of eight or so. No, contract time, 7.40. That's a different award. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, my name is Keith Magnuson. Thanks so much for having me here tonight. I'm a social studies teacher at the high school, and I appreciate you putting me on the agenda with late notice. also want to thank uh, Sue and Joanne and... Julie for their great feedback as I've been trying to plan out this uh, experience for the students. Um, so my main idea was um, uh, I thought it would be great to take my AP government and politics students to the 2021 inauguration. Um, and so I've been uh, working with a company to try to plan out an itinerary to go along with that and places to stay and uh, places to eat and all the other stuff that goes into it. It would be during the, well, the inaugurations on January 20th every year. I'm sure you're all familiar with the 20th Amendment specifies that. Um, <laughs> and so, um, it's during a week of school. It's Martin Luther, it's, uh, we'd be leaving on a Sunday, it'd be Martin Luther King Day would be the Monday, and then we'd come back on the Friday. So they would miss the four days of mid midterm exams <coughs> during that time period. They would all be seniors. Uh, as I've offered this to my AP government and politics students who are sophomores currently. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, I've talked to a, a bunch of students, there are roughly 20 or so right now who are interested. Uh, I've talked to their parents and been uh, communicating with them about the trip and uh, some of the details of the trip. And so <clears throat> at this point I thought it was good to run it by you before I uh, go any further with that. <laughs> Keith, could you just talk a little bit about um, the plan that you have coordinated with your colleagues around how students will still be able to take their midterms and also participate in the trip? Sure, yeah, so uh, this is kind of a it's, a, it's a rough plan right now just because the trip is so far away. 
So as far as exactly who chaperones are going to be, um, that's not, you know, I've talked to a few people about possibilities, but we don't have uh, a definitive list of people at this point. But um, <coughs> I worked with Sue to try to plan out what maybe the best plan would be and invite uh, maybe a, a middle school social studies teacher, uh, a, a teacher or two from the high school, and then perhaps have some parent chaperones come along too. Uh, from the faculty, we thought maybe it would be best to um, try to find some people who don't have exams to proctor that week, such as the guidance staff, the uh, learning common staff, uh, et cetera, from around the school to try to have as little student impact as possible. For the students themselves who are volunteering uh, to go on that trip, uh, I think that uh, A, it's definitely a, a, a very worthy education experience uh, for all of them. It'll be a historic experience regardless of, of whatever the outcome is. Um, and they wouldn't be missing any classes. They would miss their exam periods that, that week. So we could, knowing these students would already know in September that they were gonna miss those days, they could talk to their teachers early on, be really proactive. Uh, right now they're sophomore AP students, so they're, they're very, very responsible, very um, you know, proactive to begin with. So I think you know, me working with them and then communicating with their teachers right away in September, uh, we could probably plan around that. Uh, my, my idea right now is that I would offer up some of my free periods to proctor for students who uh, wanted to the week before exams, be there, or the last week we were in school before we left. Uh, then we might be able to offer also a couple of after school sessions. Uh, and then I could also ask colleagues um, who are off certain periods, maybe they could proctor a few as well. So I think we could probably manage if we all, if I was able to work together with a few people to uh, get almost all of that done ahead of time. I just have one question. Um, the company that was proposed for the Spain trip, I think was um, EF Education. Okay. I see this is Explorica. Yes. Do we get any uh, cost savings if we do all of our, our trips through the same company versus doing two separate ones? Oh, I'm not sure about that. Might be something to look in. I know EF yeah, offers yeah. this. Yep, yeah. and so the uh, the price quoted there drops precipitously uh, as we get more students. So uh, I did a conservative estimate of 15 students for this quote. Uh, as you get up to different thresholds, 20, 25, 30, and 35, it drops by as much as about $500. And if you get up to 45, I think it drops about $700. I, I can speak to that a little bit in terms of my own experience with it, though. In, in terms of, I, I used the F cores um, with a trip I planned a few years back, in, years back in my district, and it it's specific to that trip. So the cost savings are within that trip, and that was true last year as well. In terms of um, the trip my daughter went on when they when Mr. Trump Leo took all the kids to Europe, it was it's specific to that trip. So you don't get a cost savings by doing multiple, multiple trips within the same year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Is this sure. going to be offered um, outside of your AP? Did you say it was the AP class? Yes, it's AP governments and politics. So would you offer this outside of that class if you had enough room to, any, to interested students? Um, well, my plan right now was to offer it to students from this year and then see how many sign up, and then I'll have another set of students next year who would oh, be okay. juniors mm -hmm. at this time. So if we needed to fill Got in... It. 10 or 15 spots, perhaps see how much interest I got out of them. Okay. I think this is a super, super valuable experience. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's amazing that you've gone above and beyond to plan this for your students. Um, I think Washington, D.C. by itself is a, is a really valuable experience. Mm -hmm. um, and to see an inauguration, I think, is pretty um, special for those students who get to go. Especially now that we know David O'Connor's running. So. I know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> uh, any other questions? No. Incredibly thorough. Thank you. Great. Well, thanks so much thanks for having me tonight. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Back to diaper duty. <laughs> <laughs> we just, I just wanted to make sure we do a quick pause in case anybody wants to leave before we get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have Wrong. a we have a riveting presentation Wrong. coming up. <laughs> Seven point oh, the career path to
Career Pathways Program with Kristen Sebastian. Oh shoot, sorry Kristen. I should have made them say that. Yeah, this is yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't have a computer, so I'll just if you can the clicker up there, Kristen. Oh, okay. Do you see it? There you go. This is new for me. Which one? Good evening, and I first want to thank you as the school board for your interest in this program, for your support, and for inviting me to speak, and also um, to Superintendent Kuchenberger for your support um, all through the process from the beginning to where we are now and in this transition uh, times, uh, Principal Ketch, um, I really appreciate all of the insight and support and flexibility that you've offered uh, to continue to make the program, the internship program. Um, a success as a pilot. Um, Kate Bolton, you've been really supportive with the Career Pathways Fund. Um, Matt Parody, you've been terrific all along as we've been planning the uh, programming and also working with the school and business uh, partnership. Uh, that support all throughout the years, um, the past three years that this has been growing into what it is has really made this um, uh, what it is today and also um, now having the sponsorship of the um, Chamber of Commerce with the career the South Portland High School Career Fair and the collaboration with Cape Elizabeth High School is um, Tremendous as well, so we're, we're really moving forward in a, in a great direction, and I'm very excited about it So I'm here to speak about the career pathways program overall and just want to uh, brief you on where we are um, uh, currently and, and how, how we got here. Um, the Career uh, Pathways program started really as um, an internship program. Um, the program as a pilot, it's now in its second season, uh, has had 27 students serve to date. And it offers students an opportunity to immerse themselves in a career exploration experience through the course of a semester internship at a business or um, organization locally or in the Portland, Scarborough, Cumberland County um, vicinity. And uh, the key to this program as an internship is the mentor uh, connection. And we have a mentor here tonight, Peter Esposito, who will be Ooh. speaking um, on, on behalf of the Scarborough School Nutrition Program, and Emma Latart, who is one of our interns um, there um, with the Scarborough School Nutrition Program. Um, the mentoring component is really critical to students being able to connect with what their experience is in that place, learning skills, being guided along, um, not feeling just dropped into a place maybe um, where they're just supposed to figure it out and no one having really a sense of what, um, what uh, the student's learning goals might be. Uh, so our mentors uh, spend time out of their workday or within their workday to support students in their experience. Another part of the program um, is a seminar course, which I teach and support student learning through reflection. Um, students are writing regular reflection papers. We have in the course itself um, an opportunity for students to develop resume cover letters. We talk about interview skills. We talk about uh, the professional skills that are needed in the workplace that they are interning in. And it gives them also an opportunity to process, um, reflect together as they bring their stories and experiences together in that seminar classroom. Uh, so it's about 90, it is 90 hours minimum each semester that students dedicate to their internship time. They go during the school day and it is um, the last two blocks of red day currently. Um, that they will that they are on site um, for their uh, program. They also have some flexibility in hours depending on what the workplace um, setting is, depending on what um, the activities are that might be that students might be involved in. Um, Dennis Meehan is a mentor with the Portland Sea Dogs, also a chamber member, um, and he is hosting Kyle Schuler this semester. Um, it is a great experience for him, but um, some of the events take place in the evening, obviously, baseball, right? Um, so um, he has um, had some flexibility in his hours to be able to take advantage of some of those learning experiences within that. Um, the development of a database of over 145 contacts with whom we've spoken directly uh, about opportunities, internships, job, shadow, job shadowing, mentoring opportunities, as well as guest speaker um, 
uh, vetting for both classroom teachers who might want to bring in guest speakers to their classes, but also for guest speakers for workshops that I'm coordinating. The um, database is, is very valuable to us um, and can offer other opportunities to um, grow as we invest further in, in this program. Um, this year, uh, 40 additional students um, have been supported through either job shadows that I've coordinated with them, um, field visits uh, to um, uh, businesses, as well as workshops that they've been invited to that have been net, uh, networks or partnerships that um, I've been able to connect with through uh, the time that I've had uh, to, to support this. Um, let me, oh, actually, let me do this myself. Which way do I point? Anywhere. Anywhere. There you go. There we go. All right. Um, so uh, this year, hosts uh, for our internships are uh, 14. We have 14 hosts this year, and they are listed. I'm very um, grateful to each of the hosts. The um, large majority of the hosts are right here in Scarborough, which makes this program a true community effort. And um, you should be really proud of your community for the generosity that they have given to this. For I have very rarely received a no when I have contacted a business in Scarborough. And um, that says a lot for the commitment that they have to these students and, um, and to their future. Um, the um, Scarborough businesses and organizations that have supported um, beyond the internship uh, program. They're listed as well as um, together with those that have sponsored workshops, um, supporting, supported as participants in the career fair. This is quite a list um, and this is only the second season pilot for this program um, with a half time roughly um, dedication to it. So this, there is so much more potential here um, with growing uh, this investment. Um, there are really, as we think about going forward, this is what we've done this year. Additional learning experiences beyond the internship program have included a career talks workshop. Uh, it's more like a career talks uh, program series that um, I began piloting in the fall, and I'd like to see us be able to continue to expand it to maybe quarterly, um, having c different topics uh, presenters on different topics related to specific fields come in to speak to students and inviting students into the learning commons. Deidre Dupre has been a terrific resource to us, has opened the learning commons and really has a vision for creating that space uh, to be more of a community space. That is something that for the last six years, I would say, at Scarborough, I've really felt the urgency for us to um, get behind and I think um, I know many of you also have that, um, that sense for using that space um, a in a more community-oriented way. So the career talks on journalism, uh, sports marketing, and communication, uh, that, that program was held in November. Uh, we have had five students attend the Family Medicine Night, which was a, an opportunity to meet with PAs, ner uh, nurse practitioners, and um, other physicians at um, a main medical center location in Portland where they were able to um, ask about the career, um, training, learning opportunities, see demos, have a chance to see um, how to do a sonogram, um, how to do stitches, uh, really hands-on um, learning opportunities. And these are um, just a slice of what we can potentially connect students with. Um, the South Portland High School Career Fair, which is now really uh, becoming much more of a joint effort between Scarborough, South Portland, and Cape Elizabeth, um, is um, going to take place on May 1st, and we invite you to attend. It's between 9.30 and 11.30 at South Portland High School, and you're welcome to come and see all of the 80 plus exhibitors and over 700 students that will be um, going through the event. We'll be taking a group of almost uh, 100. We're, we're at about 85 students signed up right now. We're hoping to reach our goal of 100. We're doing volunteer signups of sophomores and juniors to attend on um, May 1st next week. So we'll be bringing them over for that event. 
and Matt is going to be helping us as part of the chamber as well. Um, the um, Health Career Fair, this is a terrific opportunity that has come to us through Maine Health, Maine Medical Center. Um, Janelle Lewis and I have been collaborating for a couple of years now. She uh, was looking for a location to hold a uh, health career exploration uh, event that would be invitation only and basically ex uh, offer it to um, a group of 30 students from Scarborough, 30, the first 30 to sign up and we were able to get the word out to parents and students um, and limit that audience to, uh, for now and hopefully continue to expand it as um, we, we have the capacity to do so. Um, but that will include a, a group of physicians, nurses, um, and other medical practitioners. It's a joint um, event with Nordex Labs, which um, Paula Davis, our uh, very faithful um, a, a assistant at the main office, um, she um, helped me get in touch with Nordex a couple years ago, right here down the road. Um, she was um, able to connect me to be able to have um, <coughs> a chance to explore possible uh, internship opportunities, but although internships aren't necessarily a possibility, they have been opening the door to uh, workshops and training programs. This will be a joint um, uh, event with Nordics and uh, <coughs> Maine Medical Center uh, mm -hmm. for students. And we have filled, uh, we, had, we had the sign-ups filled within seven days of opening up that registration. Uh, there's high demand for the healthcare field within our um, student population. Um, I'll be taking a group of freshmen along with Albert McCormick, who um, teaches science. Uh, we'll be going to Owen Semiconductor for Freshman Shadow Day. I've been coordinating with Owen Semiconductor to create a program to be able to allow students to explore careers in STEM. Um, we'll be taking a group of 15. That's the limit that they have. These kinds of opportunities are coming to us, and we have needed a liaison to be able to bring these to our students and coordinate with teachers, um, with administration, and all of the other um, uh, partners that are involved in this. So I'm grateful for this opportunity. Um, Nordic Phlebotomy Summer Training, we um, they actually added a second training. We announced that to our students, um, 18 years or older. They're welcome to sign up. So this has been something that has been um, a, a new program that Nordics is doing to train um, students who are interested in the medical field. So even if they want to go into um, becoming a surgeon, to start at a level of learning in um, phlebotomy is a great opportunity to get um, exposure. And I was able to take two students to the Nordics Labs at Maine Medical Center um, in Portland and w generously was offered a tour with um, Steve Winger, who um, also has students in our, sc our school system. Um, and he and Stephanie Linville from Nordix were uh, able to give these students a custom tour of the lab facility at Maine Medical Center and inspiring them to um, either sign up for the training program or to uh, continue in the medical career in their, in their pursuit of medicine. Uh, finally, uh, the last two, Bowdoin International Music Festival internship, they've just decided to put together an internship opportunity for students um, and they have reached out to schools. Um, again, this is a, the growing demand uh, both of businesses, organizations to train students early, to capture their interest early, um, to get them to define and explore a career early on um, and uh, are committed to connecting with the schools. So this is something that um, I met with uh, Renee Richardson and Patrick Boker about, um, and they have been reaching out to their students to share these opportunities. There's different ways that work well for being able to get um, the invitations out to students or gather together the target audience. And this is a custom approach um, that really um, works um, as we're piloting and learning um, and growing this in a sustainable and thoughtful way. So that is the intent. Um, grateful to um, Revision Energy and so many others, but CWS Architects right here in Scarborough and also uh, Risperra Brothers for hosting Job Shadows. Um, and there are others that have hosted um, outside of Scarborough as well. Um, I'm, I think I'm about to finish up here because I know Emma and um, Peter are, are ready to get going soon. Um, looking ahead to 2019 and 2020, 
and beyond. Hopefully, this um, we really want to grow this program um, and uh, opportunities that are relevant, quality, um, and, and meaningful for our students. Um, expanding the internship program next year. We're just starting to discuss um, enrollment. Students are coming. I am getting about three students a week asking me now about can I sign up for the internship program. I'm interested in the internship program. We will re reach capacity rather quickly. Um, this will probably be, depending on um, how we uh, roll it out, ten, uh, a limit of 10 students in the fall semester and then 15, uh, excuse me, 20 students in the winter semester. That will uh, double the size of what we've been able to do this year um, in the course of one year. Um, we'll be creating next year a job shadow hub, which will offer students um, an opportunity to meet uh, and talk about what their interests are and then maybe search or discuss uh, or somehow connect with job shadow opportunities that would be um, available through the context we've created or that we can um, go out and find for them and support them in being able to explore career uh, um, ideas and opportunities. Um, we've been working with um, Ali Murtha and Tim Walker and the uh, student services team to develop ideas on how we can shore up and integrate better a career exploration curriculum. That's been a discussion that we actually just had together today um, uh, to expand on with Sue and Eric Huntington and um, with Jen Adams as well. So we're really starting to look at ways to um, move our, move our uh, career exploration further along and uh, deepen it in our curriculum. Uh, facilitating field visits, guest speakers, workshops, and um, uh, for, for STEM and other uh, content areas throughout the course of the next year. Those will, um, with more time to dedicate to it, we'll be able to offer more of those opportunities. Expanding the Career Talk program series, as I mentioned earlier, uh, piloting a mentor program, and how that actually looks will um, come become more clear um, as we connect uh, with potential partners and have a chance to um, map that out, but I know that there are many um, different directions that we can go with that. Um, I'd like to see us collaborate more with uh, K-8 on programming and partnerships. Um, this program at ON Semiconductor um, was actually modeled on their eighth grade job shadow day, which many schools participated in, including ours, um, uh, middle school. And um, the opportunity for uh, expanding that to freshmen and beyond um, is, is, is there for us. It just takes the time to coordinate. Also, um, looking forward to strengthening partnerships with Junior Achievement. Um, they have been partners with our school system in um, the K-8 levels, but um, we want to be able to bring more of their programming into um, the high school level. And um, I had a uh, presenter come in to my seminar class this semester, uh, Tom Morgan with Sales Accelerated, and he did a, an excellent presentation for my students. Um, and he was a connection made through um, Michelle Anderson, and um, who is an alum of Scarborough High School and also the president of uh, Junior Achievement. And I'm grateful to uh, S Assistant Superintendent Sizemore for all of your support in both the internship program as well as in connecting me with um, Junior Achievement and encouraging that. Um, other companies that we're looking at developing programming with are Unum, which is also a connection that um, Assistant Superintendent Simsmore has offered, and um, we're looking forward to op op offering a um, job shadow visit or um, field visit day, hopefully in the fall um, of the coming school year. Uh, continuing to work together with our local chamber, thank you, and also SEDCO and the School and Business Partnership will be um, an imp will be important um, partners for us as we continue to grow and build this program. So thank you very much. I'll take questions if you have any. How many language classes are you taking right now? I teach three Spanish, three classes. So, so I think it's important <coughs> for the community to know that. You're doing all this and still teaching three language classes. And I just need to commend you for how much you have done with this program mm -hmm. as a pilot and still having responsibility in your classroom. It is really amazing. And I'm super excited to see what it can build into as a full-time commitment that we can make in this district to support this program. And I, I will continue to support it and fight for it for you. Thank you.
Any other questions? I would just add before we transition to, um, and Christy, maybe you'll introduce oh, the yeah. next um, presenters. That would, yeah. Um, I think Christy is being modest in, in how this actually got started. This was her original proposal that she had shared um, and advocated for, and even when we weren't able to fully fund a position to devote to it, still found a way to, I mean, I learned about additional things that you're doing this year that I didn't even know about. And so not only is it the ability to have the vision and articulate it in the form of the proposal, but then to ex execute it in such an expert way. This is 99.9% .9 about relationships and those connections that you make and the way that you nurture those relationships is critical to the success of, of this work. And so I just wanna thank you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, to not, without further ado, uh, Peter Esposito, um, who has been a phenomenal intern, or intern, mentor, <laughs> I've already switched, switched the roles, and Emma Lickhart has done terrific work together with you. So, so I guess this is a perfect segue to talk about my intern, Emma. Um, she's a little nervous, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a lot of the talking. Um, one of the one of the things when we first when we first came um, when Christy came to me, um, I had no idea what what you know. I said sure, I'd do it, but I didn't know what I was getting into. Um, I didn't know what I was going to teach her or if she was going to be able to grasp all this stuff. Well, I lucked out. Um, she uh, immersed herself uh, greatly in in our department, um, and I have to thank all of my staff because um, she pretty much worked with everybody in our district. Um, she is gonna be taking nutrition in college, so obviously I said, well, let's do some, you know, some menu planning or some, um, some recipe, uh, um, and we had just changed our new database where I had a whole slew of recipes that I came, when I came here in 2015, I brought with me. Well, the segue into the Healthy Hunger Free Act, um, all those recipes didn't meet the guidelines anymore, so we had to go through about 8,000 recipes and try to make them meet the guidelines. So Emma, who's very good on the computer, um, <laughs> um, we, had, we had been working on it for months between you know three or four of us, but it was, it was very time consuming. Well, when you have someone with the skills that she has, it was, it was you know, we gave her a lesson for half an hour maybe, um, and then she was like, like smoke coming off the keyboard. So she, was, <laughs> she finished the database that, that we needed. So I was very happy with that. But also I tasked her with creating a, a fun menu for, for May, which she has done. Um, and it was very well received. I'm, you know, I wanna see, I mean for April, um, I wanna see what the counts are, but they have been very much higher by, by doing, just theming the days out and titling them. Um, she did a great job with that. So the first, one of the first times that we met, she came over to Cape. I said, well, we're doing a special function over there. And she goes, well, what is it? And it's like, it's just lunch, but we're doing something special. And I had invited um, you guys over to check that out. We had pulled our program out of, at Cape Elizabeth out of the school lunch program because some of the calorie counts, the sodium levels, we changed all the recipes and then it got changed again on us. So things didn't exactly taste as good. So um, we had surveyed the students at the high school, which Emma created a survey for our students here in Scarborough um, to see what they, what they wanted and you know, what we could do without giving them something that wasn't nutritious. So we had talked about, I said, well, how about some salads and all that? Well, she had come up with a list of, I don't know, 15 or so salads. Well, some of them were very close on calorie count, so we couldn't serve them. And if you look in some of her, in her packet, she has some great ideas that it just, and I mean, if anybody looked at that, they'd be like, oh, that's great, that's very healthy. Well, it was still 50 calories over or whatnot, so we couldn't serve it. Going back to Cape, we were doing a pasta bar where we were cooking, we were cooking as the, as the students were coming through. We had four, four different saute stations set up. So she's like, why can't we do that in Scarborough? And I'm like, well, we, can't because it doesn't act, actually meet the guidelines. Well, the kids loved it, and she was walking around, taking in everything, so she has a huge catalog of changes she'd like to make. So, <laughs> um, you know, and, I, and I'm definitely in support of all of that. Um, so one, one of the things, going back to what we've changed and why we wanna do this, um, 
do certain students are able to leave the campus? I mean, or they do, they cross the street, they're buying stuff that is actually very unhealthy, so why, why, why shouldn't we have something that they would purchase in our school? So um, one of the other things is we were limited to what we could sell a la carte wise. And if you look in the back of the packet, she put some pictures together that has some snack items, which, um, I'll hold this up. We got a Cocoa Puff bar. Oh, uh, yeah, she can. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. So, so there's a, a Cocoa Puff bar. It's whole grain, but there's like a zillion ingredients in it. This meets the guideline for this, the school lunch program. Trix bar, that meets. Now, then we also have the, what is it, RX, RX bars. It's like four or five ingredients, but it's 10 calories over the count. That was one of the things that we brought up on our review because we did have that and we were 10 calories over, so that's something that was brought to our attention. So my, my feeling is I would rather th have them have something that's more natural without the, the added sugar or colors um, that we have there. So that was, that was also one of the things. Um, we wanted to also have the flexibility in our recipes to, um, they had cut the sodium content down so much, and I mean, it's not like we were, it was, we were serving salty stuff, but when you cut all the salt out of it, then you have no flavor. Um, so we would like to continue with the soups and whatnot that we had been making right along. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the money, the reimbursement rates and all that stuff. <laughs> We're looking at roughly, we did an average, and I did it, I did it over a six month period, and I did an average. We're, we're serving like 52 free lunch kids at the high school and whatever we do. So this is the subsidy that we would get for that, but also it costs us money to create that meal. So between $1.50 and $2, depending on what the average is. So basically, we, we would be losing about $1.50 a meal for, for this. We just wouldn't be getting the subsidy, but we would only be it would only cost our district $1.50 or so, whatever the food cost is. Mm -hmm. And then another reason we wanted to try to do that is um, Emma brought up that kids see other kids and they, we have to make them get three components on their tray or it's not considered a meal. So we make them take a fruit. If they don't have a fruit, we put it on their tray and they take it and they throw it in the trash. <laughs> um, so not only is it costing us more by having to do that, I mean, in I, how many do you think that is a day? Well, a couple hundred a day. So we're wasting a ton. So that's one of the things that we would like to stop. Um, and there's a couple of studies that are in there from Harvard, and I think you had one yeah. Yeah, from Michigan or something, mm -hmm. Michigan State, um, that this is what's happening. They're trying to relax the guidelines in the national but our state does not want to relax it. Um, everything they want, everything whole wheat or whole grain, they want everything, um, obviously the calorie counts lowered and all that. So the only thing that we're asking is to, we're still gonna be serving the same wholesome food that we are, but we would just wanna be pulled out so we can offer more. Because um, we like did a survey, we found out what kids really wanted and it's not anything that's really, you know, not acceptable or anything, but it's, we'd like to expand our salad bar offerings, and I'm gonna let Emma talk about some of the benefits of why we wanna do this. So the benefits of healthy eating are, a healthy meal plays an essential role in maintaining a healthy weight, which is an important part of an overall good health standard that everyone must get on track with in today's society. Studies show that better mood comes with healthy eating, which makes people happier overall, and improved mood, which means concentration, percentage of students will increase as well as better grades as a direct result. Athletic performance increase, healthy bo body equals healthy mind, which equals a healthy attitude, which equals overall success. Um, students are also more awake and aware of surroundings rather than like responding to phone data, just dazing off, and healthy food also equals strong bones. Um, it also cuts stress levels in, how, in half. Healthy foods have a huge impact on, of the relaxation on neurotransmitters such as serotonin, dopamine, and adrenaline. <coughs> it boosts your immunity, keeping gut bacteria happy and healthy can strengthen the immune system 
to reduce the likelihood of infection, as well as according to a study conducted by the University of Pennsylvania in 2013, people who ate the lightest variety of foods as well as the most antioxidants were able to further catch up on the sleep they had been lacking, which is very obvious that high school students lack needed lack of lack needed sleep, whether it's due to homework, athletics, and special learning and nutrition, whether it's in school or outside. There's a saying that healthy food equals healthy mind, healthy rest, and healthy body overall. So the pros of coming out of the program, we will be able to offer a more wide range, wide range and variety of foods that students have requested. More bread options such as rye, ciabatta, pita, pumpkin bread, rather than just the 51% whole wheat or 100% whole grain. Less students going out to buy unhealthy foods from nearby chains, such as Dunkin' Donuts, Lemon Joe's, McDonald's, Wendy's, Whole Zones, you name it, we'll buy it. <laughs> um, less food is being wasted. Students will stop tossing their fruit to consider it a meal because they will no longer be required to take it if they don't want it. And it will also help growing athletes to eat enough food in order to stop the burning of their empty calories, increasing their athletic performance overall. Students will be treated as young adults now and be prepared for college campus food. They, will, they must be able to make their own healthy decisions as well as the consequences are on, them if, are on them if they don't follow through on the health they're eating rather than the school body or their parents or anything like that. We will be saving money. The profit will increase more kids buying foods inside school doors, whether it's seniors, sophomores, whether they're able to go out and buy food on their cribs, um, and less food will be wasted. It will also end singling out. Students who come from low-income families will no longer be required to have that extra fruit on their tray, so people won't be able to like be like, oh, you're from the low-income family, like, don't you want to eat that fruit? And people are going to be like, no, I really don't. It's not what I want to be eating. Eat um, the fruit. So they can eat the fruit and eat the meal. <laughs> so the cons of staying in the program, we'll have to continue to offer the limited range of foods options that we already have. Students will continue to go out and buy unhealthy foods from nearby chains, spending more money for unhealthy food out of their pocket rather than their parents. Um, continuance of food will be wasted daily. Students will not be prepared for making their own healthy choices on a college campus or in life in general. And the district will be losing money, more money due to the waste of food increasing daily. What we could serve is out of the school lunch program. So, so, go ahead. so this is one of the, in the next slide, I think it has. So this is, this is what she came up with. I mean, she, I mean, this is great. I mean, all this information. So these are all things that she wanted to implement and we want to try to implement it this year. So why we're asking is we want to, even a temporary basis, we like to, because if you come out of the program, you can go back in any time. It could be month to month if you wanted to. So there's really, we don't feel that there's any real um, con to, to pulling out right now as far as just because we'll, we still have a wellness policy that'll still govern certain foods that, you know, we're not gonna be selling soda or anything like that. So, I mean, she came up with all of these recipes. And, you know. So we'll be able to offer more salad recipes, more pizza recipes, we could do calzones, we could do smoothies, protein bars. Um, so for like a Greek salad, it would be made with cucumber, feta cheese, grape or cherry tomatoes, black olives, and light soup dressing. The pasta salad would be pretty much the same as normal, but we could do one with romaine lettuce, zucchini pasta, sesame seeds, scallions, slivered almonds, mandarin, and chicken, you name it. Um, mixed green fruit salad would be mixed greens, <laughs> strawberries, walnuts, red onion, cucumbers, feta cheese, chicken, and mandarin. And you could cook the classic Caesar salad made with romaine lettuce, shaved Parmesan cheese, croutons, cucumbers, and light Caesar dressing. Is anybody hungry yet? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I mean, the the we do do, the <laughs> we do, do some of these pre-made salads, but they're smaller, and obviously, some of the ingredients in here are a little bit higher and higher in the in the, the fat, like feta cheese. I mean, because you want to eat your greens, your protein, and all that, and this is perfect for what she's got here. Yeah. That is the best way for anybody. So, I mean, coming from a student's point of view, when I walk in the lunchroom, I see these healthy choices, but there's not a lot of salad choices. I see just the same old, I mean, you go to the fridge, they look okay to eat. They don't look that fresh. They don't look the best. <laughs> they are <But> fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I but guarantee it. They're not as crazy. Yeah. I mean, they don't have as much pizzazz as that. Yeah. <laughs> if I wanted to eat salad, I would go to Mono to grab the foods and just pay them in the little pocket Oof. for it. Um, <laughs> we could do a wider range of pizza. So we could do like a naked pizza, which is just olive oil, shaved Parmesan cheese, basil, salt, and tomatoes. 
We could do a buffalo pizza, which I know a bunch of the kids would probably enjoy, um, made with buffalo chicken and light blue cheese dressing. A veggie pizza made with peppers, onions, mushrooms, and broccoli, as well as an Alfredo pizza made with Alfredo broccoli, cheese, chicken, and onions. All right, so, so the, we've been at Cape Elizabeth, because I'm also the director there, if all of you don't know. Um, we pulled out of the program in like the mid, middle of November, I believe, and at the time we had like the following year to date to today, we've made about $30,000 more profit um, from, from doing this. Um, also, we've also increased our meal counts by about 110 a week. Um, and you figure that's about half the, that school is half the size <coughs> of Scott High School, so. Um, so we've done all that stuff in Cape too, the sushi and stuff, but there again, it doesn't have this, as much protein. You have to have so much protein and it has to be whole grain to even make that. So if we do the brown rice, the kids won't eat it. But if we do white sushi rice, they will. So that's what we have. I want to thank Emma for all the hard work with this. She really did a good job. Not only was she um, with the nutrition part of it, but she was also learning the business side of why we need to look at these other options to keep uh, being fiscally responsible to the district. So thank you. Thank Any you. questions? <laughs> Any questions? So you did a great job, both of you, presenting the, the pros of getting out of this plan and the potential cons of staying in it. I guess I'm wondering, what would be an example of a pro for staying in this? A pro to stay in? Yeah. Are there any? I, 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 I do not believe so at the high school level. Okay. I think, I think our students are, are young adults and they should be treated okay. as such and they, they know what they would like. Huh? So can I just clarify before anyone else asks, so are you only asking to remove the high school? Yeah, stuff? there's uh, the law. You cannot remove the middle school or elementary schools out. Right. Just the high okay. school. Yes, and that is all I'm asking okay. for. Do you have the ability in the high school to pump the brakes as a parent if the kids, even if it's not necessarily that they're eating them unhealthily, but... If they're spending too much money? Too Absolutely. Much money. You just call my admi administrative assistant and she can put a... Uh, note on the account. And, and would that be like a, uh, a spending limit? Or we could do a spending be? limit. You could have a note. You could have a, anything that you wanted on okay. as a note. Yeah. Not, not asking for money. We, we always, we, always, <laughs> we, have, we have a million of those over the course of the year. <laughs> so I, how Wait, much like money do we currently get? Sorry. So how much money would we be losing if we remove the, if we, if we pull out of this program? About 150, about 150 maybe dollars a day. So about $500 in a week. And the bagels that we sell at Cape kind of made up for that, for what we lost in Cape. So we plan on doing the same thing and then, you know, increasing our um, selections. So I, okay. I, I'm pretty confident that we can make that up in no time. Okay. The, the 30,000 was a, you lose reimbursement, but also we're, we're not really, because we're, we, we were still providing the meal, it still cost us money, and right. we were getting some of it back. Right. Now That's we're, we're just going to be kind of on the hook for the amount of what the meal cost us. Okay. So, and that is below what that cost us. Do you guys have a question on sure. the program public to hear? What, um, what happens with the free and reduced students? We just absorb the cost. Okay, but yep. like when they... Um, They'll still do the same thing. They'll still do the application. We'll still treat it just like that. We'll we'll have them on file just like we do now. Okay, and when they go through the lunch line, they can pick whatever they want? Yeah, and they don't have to take the fruit and throw it away. Okay. Yep. So we're not going to make them take all the components that we are made to by law okay. now. So for, uh, for somebody who qualifies for um, a supplemental lunch, do you have a, like an actual lunch or is it a it's any, they can get anything. They have to have three out of five items. So what it is is they could get, depending on what they're serving, it could be a chicken sandwich, it could be a hot dog, it could be chicken nuggets, it could be a uh, roast beef dinner, it could be anything. They can get, as long as they get three components, which would be a half a cup of vegetable, a fruit, and an entree. It could be a sandwich, it could be a deli bar, anything. And that would be the same way? Absolutely. Forward? Yep. Okay. So students will still be required to take three components? No. Oh, we're not going to make them, but that's, I think that 
was that the question you were asking? Well, well yeah, but I mean, they, well, the three they, they still, three still can the get, max? yes, yeah. 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 three is the max, they don't have to take it. So, I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't make a scene if some, if a kid was coming through and he had a milk and a, and a sandwich and that's all he wanted, we wouldn't have to make him take yeah. something else. But so, in the new system, like, they're, they can have whatever they want, it's not like they, they have to have a specific, right, that we, they don't have to have three of the five. Yes, they can have anything that we're serving, any, and they can now too. They can now too. It's not they, we don't limit it to one choice for free and reduced. So what if I, um, a student who receives free lunch, and I want uh, that delicious Greek salad and a smoothie and an RX bar and none of the none of the, a la carte, none of the snack items. It would be an entree in like two sides. That's but what they. Would but do. how would I know that as a student? What because my we, limit is? we have signs everywhere, and we educate them as they come. Okay. Okay. I have a question about, like, how, from what you know so far, how have the CAPE students, like, responded? Very, very well, very well. It's uh, very positive. Um, when we did our, our uh, pasta saute station, we had, I had the principal and assistant principal actually cooking with me, um, and he came to me after, and it was about a month later, and he said, um, the kids are, there's a lot of buzz going around and, and it shows in our numbers and our profit. I can actually speak to that. Um, Sarah, Julie and I were there the day they did the pasta bar. There had to have been 40 kids in line at all times. It was incredible to see the excitement and not only having a guest chef cooking for it, but they were able to pick what ingredients went in. Mm -hmm. And it was fascinating just to watch them because they were making really good choices. So the, the other question would be, is Principal Ketch and Mr. Legage um, and the other assistant principals willing to be guest yes. chefs? That w I, I wasn't going to ask. <laughs> I was just going to tell them. I was going to give them the, you know, the chef coat and the hat. Yeah. Yeah. Our approval is contingent on that. <laughs> I think we might be able to swing something. I have, I have just a couple other questions. So sure. as a board, um, without being a part of this program, how can we ensure that we're offering healthy choices for our students at the high school? I mean, I know we for have one, the- you have a wellness policy. Right, we have the two, wellness- have me. I wouldn't okay. serve. I mean, that's, I guess that's- That's your job? That's, that's my job. Okay, and then I have a, another question that maybe is related and maybe it's just because you're in front of me and I've been wondering this for a long time, but- um, <laughs> <laughs> is there is there any would this allow you to be able to do like protein smoothies yes. or like the snack trays um, for athletes after school? That's something we were talked about because one of my employees, John, is the strength and conditioning coach, mm -hmm. and him and I have also talked about certain things mm -hmm. for the athletes, and yeah. we're looking to once we do this, offering different snacks, um, okay. smoothies, protein bars, that that sort of stuff. Yeah. Is that something that you'd be able to do at the middle school too? No. no. Well, well we do we do smoothies at the at the middle school. But I mean, for after those school. students who are staying, so a lot of times, you know, a student will be school will end, they'll stay, stick around school, especially at the middle school level where they can't leave. Um, they're waiting around for practice. They have an hour, um, and there's not really anything available for them at that time. I mean, we have vending machines, but I mean, I yeah. think that. Um, if something like that, I mean, yeah, if I knew that there was there was some students staying out there and wanted to eat, I'd make something available to them. Maybe I'd do an online order system or something like that where they could order if they wanted to order a sandwich or a salad or something and then just have it set aside and they could grab it themselves. How many of those vending machines do you have that are connected to student accounts? Just one. Just one? Just one so far. Has that brought in a certain amount of revenue or? Yes. Would you be able to change what's in there? Oh, absolutely. That's why it's refrigerated, so we can put in like some of those salads and stuff at night okay. for, for oh, later on. And oh, that'd be that's nice. awesome. So yeah. If we can create enough revenue, then I yeah. want to purchase another one and have it down towards the gym area or in the area where the kids can access it, yeah. from like maybe down by the weight room. I don't know. I have to ask Mike. <laughs> yeah. And see if there was, there was a place, you know, that was near where kids were, where the traffic was. Question for Emma, did you, you created a survey and then did yeah. you already conduct the survey? And so <coughs> what types of things were you looking uh, to find out? I was looking to see like what kids think about our setup with like the, the cafeteria and everything. That a lot of 
bunch of the times the flow is just so hard to get through and we didn't even see him. We only had 15, 20 minutes of the ice and mm-hmm. by the time we were even there we were on him and I had probably the last ten, five minutes to eat and it took him not that long. So I'm mostly eating in my classes right now. So mm-hmm. she wants to remodel the kitchen. Remodel the cafeteria. <laughs> As well. Um, I'm also really picky about like the foods we have. A bunch of the kids are complaining that they will not eat the bread or anything that's grainy because it's more floury based. It's not more of like flavorful. Like bread. And I have yeah. a copy of the survey if yeah. you want to sure. see the I questions. I mean, she, um, you know, she asked stuff. How many times did they eat in the cafeteria? What did they maybe a couple of years ago? What was their favorite thing? What what brought them in? Um, uh, the federal regulations that they ju- ask the kids if they knew anything about it. Just, just those questions because a lot of them have no idea why they're made to take that. So mm-hmm. that's one of the questions that she also added on there. Um, and then there was some athletic questions yeah. about performance and. Um, for like football players and stuff, they're going in and they're picking sweet taco bread because that's all that they want to eat. They're burning so many empty calories. So I was thinking of putting in salad bar but it would have like the staple food so there would always be like a wing there would always be like a mac and cheese or something just so that they have the fuel and energy for practice so they're not as tired as well as the protein shakes the smoothies the protein bars at the school Welcome to stay, but if you wanted to head up, I see you in back. All right. I know where you go. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for coming. All right. 8.0, the superintendent search survey um, update. Um, I'm going to read this because it was very carefully crafted. Um, Hmm. After careful consideration, the school board has decided to close the search for a new superintendent and open a search for an interim superintendent. During the search process, we were fortunate to have input from many sources, including our own interviews, community and staff forums, and feedback from interviews with the superintendent search committee. Hiring a superintendent is one of the most important decisions a school board can make, and although we had many outstanding candidates, we strongly believe we are making the best choice for the district by taking our time to find a person who embodies the qualities most important to the board, the staff, and the community members. Our hope and expectation is to bring in an experienced interim superintendent so we can continue to focus on the progress we are making collaboratively as a board and district. We will provide our next steps tonight in this process after the executive session. Okay, 9.0, high school principal search. So our principal search, uh, we've been working on it for the last uh, two months in regards to our search committee has stayed the same as the committee from last year. We've had two meetings to review uh, the process and procedures for the search. Um, We will be interviewing on uh, Tuesday, April 30th, and um, we had four candidates and one um, candidate has dropped out. Um, We will also be doing uh, site visits um, in May, May 2nd through the 8th. And the committee will meet on May 8th for a final recommendation or sooner than that. Thank you. Okay, new business. 10.1. Mr. Yang. Absolutely. It is with great pleasure (laughs) that I move to authorize the Eight Corners Modular Classroom Project based on appropriated funds from the school impact fees in the amount of $260,000 for the purpose of preparing the site and installing two modular classrooms and directing the superintendent to take all reasonable steps necessary to accomplish the project. So moved. Second. 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 (laughs) Can we all second that? I'm just going to ask. Please. Is there any discussion? (laughs) I'm I'm not a dad. There's no daggers, I swear. (laughs) Um, I just want to say thank you for the whole committee for all of the work that you did. I think you probably could recite the presentation from memory at this point, Um, but it was passionate and thank you. And I'll just add for um, the community, our facilities director, Todd Jepson, is on it. I have the contract right here ready to be signed um, as soon as we have an affirmative vote. And um, hopefully we'll have some updates in the near future of the timeline and things like that for you. And with that, all those in favor? 
Fantastic. Unanimous. Okay. 10.2. Can I have a motion to authorize the Nutrition Food Program Director to withdraw from the National School Nutrition Program at Scarborough High School for a pilot period of time in order to assess the value of continuing? So moved. Second. Any discussion? The board wanted to say one quick thing, if I could. Um, it sounds like this, the, from my perspective, this seems to be very little risk here because, as was said during the presentation, we can re-enter this program at any time. It's not like mm -hmm. we have to commit for a full year or anything like that. So it, it sounds like a very reasonable request to, to mm -hmm. test this out. And if it's been successful in a neighboring district, it, it seems even more exciting. Mm -hmm. I agree. What's the process for definitely bring um, breakfast sales, lunch sales, a la carte sales information so you can see the differences. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would just hope that we can, you can withdraw right away, right? You, you, you can withdraw right away and you can go back in. Right. right. So you're going to try to, you're going to try to start, start the pilot this school year? Yes, I would like to try to do it at, probably after the end of March, I guess. And then um, once our, once our state planning come in and then actually remove it, um, and we have like a month to maybe May. maybe a half yeah. and see and, I, and depending on what um, you would like to do I mean I don't know if a month is enough time to get off the ground because mm -hmm. I mean mm -hmm. I saw changes in the first three weeks in the school case but I don't know here mm -hmm. I can't say for sure but I'm pretty confident that within a couple of months we would see exact yeah. changes well that and that's that's my point exactly I think the metrics are obviously very important to look at but I would like to give that time Okay. And, and we need to we need to get through the you know the beginning of next year and then you you know defer to you in terms of when might be a good time to start evaluating how well it's working. Yep. Maybe get Emma on marketing. Dylan. <laughs> 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 uh, I just I was curious. It's such a period of time. It just seems kind of weird that we wouldn't set a certain amount of time before we have like an update to determine. Well, I think that spoke to both what yeah. Sarah and Andy were saying that um, six weeks may, probably would not be enough time. Mm -hmm. So we would need to let this come in through the fall as well. Um, I would hate to put too narrow of a time because we could lose some momentum. Um, mm -hmm. I think just as we're getting in there, this, this school year is going to be over. And I think by putting a putting a time limit on it, this well, the fact that you can leave and join, kind of at the drop of a hat, it mm -hmm. sounds like, m I feel like makes that maybe a moot point, right? Because we do want to have enough time. I think the more important thing is that we get some feedback from right. Peter, um, probably maybe after this school this month or six weeks or whatever it is, and then again in the fall, mm -hmm. um, and and then we can reassess that if if need be. Okay. All those in favor? So moved. Congratulations. All right. All right. Get that menu going. Fantastic. Um, 10.3. I think this is going to be um, getting a lot of attention and a lot of happiness in a moment. Um, oh there's a motion to amend the 2018-2019 school calendar, making Friday, June 14th, 2019, the last day for our students as a half day, and Monday, June 17th, the last day of school for all of our staff. Do you want a motion? motion. Yes. So moved. Yeah, Second. <laughs> Discussion? I Great idea. What? <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> so it, it was the 11th before snow days, right? I'm yes. looking at yes. it right now. Okay. Can I ask why it's so it was the same day for, I may be behind the times here, maybe the, it was the same day for students and teachers, but now there's a different day for the reason for that? So I can speak to that. It, um, contractually, our teachers have 182 days. Mm -hmm. Our students have 177 days. By law, we're only required to have 175 days. Gotcha. And so this is something that has happened in the past in Scarborough, where if it, 
the snow days push us out to bring in kids back for a Monday, um, we are able to use one of those two flex days to still meet the requirement, still actually exceeding the requirement, um, but staff contractually have to fulfill their contract. And um, the extra time is much appreciated for them to be able to wrap things up. And mm -hmm. All those in favor? So moved. Okay. 10.4, the mix and mingle waiver fee for Wentworth Cafe. Yes, um, I would invite our, um, our guest here, Jane Flanagan, to the podium so that she can speak to you about this. Um, and actually, I would request the board to take 10.4 and 10.5 together as they're okay. similar. Jane? So you've probably seen the letter. Um, so I'm going to turn it to a little adult education here <laughs> so you can support, support adults because to learn to square dance, which when you learn it, you can dance anywhere on the planet, okay? <laughs> what we do is we start a class in September, once a week on Thursday nights. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and... We have a class come in and we run it for about 30 weeks all the way through mid-May or so. And once you graduate from our class, you can dance anywhere, <laughs> literally, on the planet. It's really good exercise. Uh, it takes you away from your troubles because there's nothing else you can think of <laughs> while you are dancing except <laughs> listening to the caller and doing what he says. The caller doesn't call what you dance. You have to dance what he calls. <laughs> uh, so it would, we run a very tight budget. We break even every year, basically. At the end of the year, when we're all giddy, we say, is there any money in here for the school department? And yes, it's a few hundred bucks. So we usually make a donation at the end of the year. Do you have any questions? Um, I have a question. How um, does this allow you to keep the fee for the class at a, at a lower price yes. point? Okay. Yes. We charge $5 a night for everybody that's dancing, whether they're already members, already graduates, or not. Mm -hmm. So everybody pays $5 a night. And we turn around and we pay that to the caller. The caller just doesn't sit there with records. He's got to pay um, BMI ASCAP for a license fee to mm -hmm. use those songs. So they have expenses as well. Thanks. So we pay the caller a, around $125 every Thursday. How many people participate? We usually, we usually have uh, between 24 and 32 people. Need uh, we think in terms of squares? We need eight people for a square. So I'm thinking, can I do the math up here? <laughs> so yeah, between 24 and 32 people usually every Thursday night. Julie, who do we have from the pool that is available? I'm not sure who, which custodians or who it would be. Yeah. yeah. One's Tom. <laughs> I know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And he's, I guess he's there until almost nine that night anyway. It's kind of like. Because he's the night or the afternoon, yeah. evening guy. Yeah. And then Wentworth. We use, we use Wentworth when we can, not surrounding school vacation weeks, because that got knocked back last year. Um, there are customary club dance where we invite from other clubs in anybody. They could be from Australia. We never know who's going <laughs> to show up at these things. Uh, but that is the third Saturday of each month. Can I ask a logistical question? Sure. Sorry. Um, I was under the impression that community services was in charge of the outside, outside town people renting the facilities. So I'm just wondering why, why we are doing the 
Is it because of the donations? So, no. Um, they have been using the schools for over 20 years, and each year they come to the board, and um, typically the superintendent makes the recommendation for the board to waive the fee for them to use our space. Um, they Things are scheduled through the rec, rec track, which is the software system that community services use, uses, but the fee schedule is determined by the schools. Okay. Yeah, the janitor schedule is determined right. by the schools. Right. right. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. So the recommendation is for the school board to agree to waive the fees um, and allow Mix and Mingle Square Dance Club to use both Eight Corners and Wentworth schools as they have been for the last 20 years. So moved. Second. Any discussion? It sounds like fun. It does. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> um, Change your meeting date. <laughs> All those in favor. Thank you. So moved. Thank you, Jane. Thank, Thank you for you. coming Thank you. tonight. Thank you. Have fun. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. I am taking 10 6, 10 7, and 10 8. It's the meeting minutes for the workshop and business meeting of March 21st, 2019, and the meeting minutes of April 4th, 2019. Motion is to accept them as written. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Passed it. And then 10.9, the Wentworth School donation. Yes, so this is um, a donation that you'll probably remember. We have these from time to time. It comes from Hannaford. Um, they have a program called Hannaford Help Schools Program. And the parents and community, when they purchase certain items that are tagged you know, accordingly, it creates like a kickback towards the schools. And so the recommendation is for the board to um, accept this donation of $669 to benefit the Wentworth School this time. Awesome. Motion? So moved. Thank you. Second. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. <laughs> I think it just rotates through because we've had the high school already once this year. We've had Pleasant Hill. This is your first time? Yeah, you put your receipt in the... Yeah. Oh, the There's school like that you want to choose. a whole bunch of slots. Obviously, like, I haven't been doing it. All the Scarborough <laughs> schools and some other schools and even preschools, I think. And when you get a... You, it, get, it comes with your receipt. You get like an amount for um, Hannaford Health Schools. And you slick and you stick it in the slot of the school that you want it to go to. I think it's going to be a helpful certain level. Thank you for that clarification, Principal Crosby. Any further discussion? All those in favor of accepting the donation? So moved. Okay, eleven point zero. Can I have a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to one MRSA four hundred five six C? For the purpose of considering a contractual proposal with MSMA, the Maine School Management Association, to return to public session. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Excellent. Will you? So the board's going to go into an executive session, and then they're going to come out to take action on the contract that they're discussing. Um, you can choose to stay if you would like, or you could choose to head home. Do you have to go every Thursday or could you say go every other Thursday?
Okay, we're back. Um, thank you. Can I have a motion to approve the MSMA contract um, for the purpose of hiring an interim superintendent? So moved. Second. Discussion? Um, just to fill in where we landed with things, um, effective tomorrow, we'll be posting a public, pu publicly posting a position for an interim superintendent um, until a suitab suitable candidate is found. Um, so that will be through MSMA. Um, they conducted the search. The board will complete those interviews and more to come as candidates start applying. Any further discussion? All those in favor? So moved. Okay. 13.0. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. No discussion. All those in favor? Thank you all very much. <coughs> Sometimes. Seriously? Oh my god, yeah.